All right. So we, on this RTAA again, we replaced this valve. It was leaking real bad. And uh, we let it sit pressure test overnight. And I came in this morning to check it. And I found that right there, a small little leak that uh, didn't get sealed up. So that's my plan right now. I need to get that leak sealed. I mean, I got uh, about 100 pounds of nitrogen on it right now. I need to bleed that down and uh, wrap the valve, get the torches going, heat that up, seal it, uh, and then repressure test, verify the leak is sealed. That's the only one I found. Everything else we fixed is, is sealed, so this is all we're down to. Then we can get the vacuum going, and I really, really need to get this back online today. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a tight day. All right, so we got the pressure bled down. Uh, I'm about to put a rag on this. I'm gonna leave this valve partially cracked. Um, and all I need to do is just come in and finish off the weld right here. Um, I'll show, clean that up. So it just looks like, cause we're, this is brass to copper and we're having to use the orange. I think this is 40, or this is a 56% with orange flux is what we use for uh, different metals um, or non-like metals so anyway uh, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to get my rag more in the body here where all the seals are that we're trying to protect and try to keep it away from this joint as much as possible that's what happens to a lot of people they get their rag too close to the joint when they don't have to have it that far down and uh, it, it ends up biting them because they've, they're, they're taking too much of their heat away. So I'm going to get this up here. Where it's most critical. Tuck that in. And that'll let me focus my heat here. And I'm protecting the valve body itself from overheating. Let me adjust you a little bit. Get you a little bit better angle on that. Right there. Okay. So, like I said, we just need to come in right here. Right here, we need to hit and adjust and fix. One thing about this orange is you have to you have to really, really control your heat because it's so fluid and it flows at a much lower temperature than 15 because it's got a higher content silver content so you can't uh, you can't put as much heat on it as you would with 15% uh, Okay, pretty sure we got it. We're gonna let that sit for a few minutes, everything cool down. Uh, we will then repressurize the system and see if we hold. So, like I said, the critical thing when you're using these higher concentration um, uh, solder sticks or brazing sticks you have got to make sure you control your heat uh, because that's going to make or break your joint. You cannot get that thing too hot. It will not bond to the joint at all. 
and there's a really tight little window where you get the perfect weld on it and you can clean everything up versus just have a real sloppy looking job and, and it's and this one was and honestly I, I, my tech did extremely well on this I'm really happy with it it's just there's one spot where it looked like he may have been a little hot uh, from what I can tell and so uh, that's the only thing that got him he just got a little warm in one area it got too fluid it didn't stick it, it just flowed back out of it before it cooled down and it just never had a chance so all good I got the repair the second time so the first time there was just this teeny tiny little pinhole leak uh, left in the uh, uh, where the hole was and so we made it smaller but I didn't get it fully sealed and I think the reason for that was I didn't get enough heat uh, up here in the valve body so what I did the second time is I really concentrated the heat up here more to make sure we're getting penetration on the valve and then uh, I added a little more and I put a nice little cap uh, on the uh, the joint so that really helped verify the seal there so just pressure tested it no leaks everything looks good uh, we're, we're ready to hook up and start vacuum so that's our next process uh, I'm gonna get that going now Okay, so we got vacuum going. Uh, if you don't know, always make sure that you open this quarter inch port and purge uh, your uh, your Tez 8 every time you go to start it. Because if you don't, it's going to have a lot of trouble turning on. Anyway, you see how I kind of fighting with the hose there for a second? That's because I'm trying to get this as straight as possible. I need to do this vacuum as, as quickly as I can, otherwise it's going to be a really late night. But not going to cut any shortcuts either but we've got it connected up there stabilize myself sorry for the sorry for the jitters there and there so that'll be a really nice pull we're going to get the micron gauge i use this uh, yellow jacket we're going to come down here and we're going to tap it right here on this discharge port. Pull this little gauge off. Magnet it right there. Get that going on there. All right. All right, sweet. So we're rocking and rolling on vacuum. Uh, if you don't know, you want to put your your micron gauge as far away as possible from your actual vacuum. It, it's going to do its best work there, and you're going to get a more true and accurate uh, vacuum reading or micron reading. So we're pulling down now. It's doing its job. Uh, at this point, I just need to uh, I need to go through and, and uh, actually no. I, at this point, I just need to let the let the vacuum do its job, pull the system down, and just get out the way. It's it's uh, it's got it from here. I also need to repair this. So while the guys were carrying the tanks in and out, this was sticking out like this. And it broke it off so I need to get I'm just gonna get a whole new assembly I'll get a new reducer new nipple valve 90 everything and I should just be able to replace it from that reducer out and uh, be good to go so I'll pick that up while I'm uh, while I'm out getting lunch and then we'll end up having to have insulators come out rewrap and re-insulate this for us since we messed it up but you know sometimes it just happens 
is uh, just the way it goes. You just gotta adapt and overcome. Well, we got the vacuum going. I just got back from picking up material and uh, the vacuum is down to 1900, staying steady. But it's uh, ticking away, so that's good. I'm just gonna let that stay running. And hopefully it finishes. If not, we leave it running overnight. And we'll have to figure something out for tomorrow. Now, I'm gonna, while that's still pulling, I need to come over here and fix this. I got the parts for it, so let's get that set up now. All right, so we're gonna need this. That's Okay, and we're gonna grab this. Still going. There's our parts. So let's get y'all set up so y'all can see what's going on and we'll get the repairs going. The vacuum is still going. It's going to take overnight to complete that. I'm not going to stay here and babysit it any further. So I'm going to go ahead and pack up and get everything together, get all my stuff loaded up in the truck and come back tomorrow. I do have a call first thing in the morning. I need to put some oil in a, uh, some Copeland's on our RTU. After I finish that, I'll be coming back here, verifying vacuum's finished, it, it holds the vacuum, and then we'll be charging. Uh, one of the interesting things about it was the circuit one here was overcharged. I think we pulled, they said 350, 60 pounds. And it was supposed to be It's supposed to be 318. I think we pulled almost 360 out. So it was considerably overcharged, but circuit two was low on charge from the leaks it had. So what we're gonna do is take the overcharge from circuit one and add that back to circuit two to top it off. And then any extra left over is extra left over. So, That'll be tomorrow. We're going to wrap up today and call it.